Yeah. SDS drill bit down no, to... 12 actually. 12 is it? Yeah. I'll start again, shall I? It's 12 because you did say 12. 12, yes, it's 12. Right, you've got to go 12. <laughs> right, so we put a half inch hole uh, into the timber. Actually, and we... Keith, that's 12.5 mil, isn't it? What is? Half inch. You're taking the piss. <laughs> Someone will say it. He right. said 12 mil. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello everyone, in today's video we've got a nice little job, we're working inside which is great because the winter's upon us. What we've got here is a little sort of industrial unit, if I just pan round here you can see, um, no price for, for, for guessing uh, what company was in here before, all these rolls of carpet have got to go. So we've got this little industrial unit here, roughly 100 square metres it is, uh, my buddy who um, you have seen him if you watch any of my videos. He's been on some of my videos before. I've done lots of work for him, kitchens and bits and bobs. He's got a kitchen company and he's relocating. His rent's up in the place he's in, so he's going to bite the bullet, uh, rent this place out for a short time, and then I think he's arranged to buy it. So what we're doing here, this is going to be his uh, offices and workshop. As you can see, we've got a nice big head height here, so what we're going to do is put a uh, floor in. Um, it's not going to, well, it's a mezzanine, I suppose, but we're going, to, we're going to joist it out sort of fairly traditionally. What we're going to do is put a, find our levels, we're going to put a um, ledger all the way around the walls, which we're going to resin anchor on. Then once that's done, we're then going to put, if I just show you here, there's Ryan. Say morning, Ryan. Morning. He, he's the Grand Fromage who we're working for today. Um, so what we're then going to do, basically where these central piers are, is we're going to put a spine wall all the way down the middle, and then obviously we can joist from the ledges that we put on the outside, bearing down onto the top of this spine wall, and then obviously we can floor it. We've got lots of lovely timber here. Don't know how well we're going to get on today because we're just sort of trying to find our feet. But as I said, first job is going to be set a laser line up, and what we'll do is... We'll fix on the 8 by 2s onto the wall first with some uh, M10 by 100mm Fisher fixings. And then once we've got them on, what we're going to do is we've got some threaded bar here and we're going to use a chemical resin anchor to fix them to the wall. So don't quite know exactly how I'm going to format the video, so I'll probably set up a bit of a camera, watch a bit of time lapse and then talk through bits and bobs as and when we get to them. So let's get on. Right, we've got the laser up, that's the height we want. And what we've done to help us, we've got these eight by twos, which are 4.8 meters long, which are for the perimeter. What we've done just to help us, uh, this is only like a lightweight uh, thermalite type block. Just fired a couple of tabs on there. And then what we'll do is sit the eight by two on top of that, put a couple of uh, M10 by 100 Fisher fixings in it. Once we've done that all the way around, we'll come back, find the right positions we want to drill, because obviously we don't want to hit a perp joint or a bed joint. Uh, with our resin and then we can drill out for the resin and then we can cut the bar and stick the resin in. So um, I'll suck a camera up on time lapse so you can watch us do a bit of that. So we're just putting these uh, wall ledges up and you see we've run into a slight problem here and again this is the one of the sort of uh, issues you have when you work with wood, it's a natural material. If you can just see by this laser line, look, that obviously this timber's got quite a big bow in, look, so we're sort of 10 mil below the laser line there, we're spot on it here and then in the middle you can see it's raising up 10 mil and then when we get down, back down this end again, it's low. So what we've got to try and do is pull this bow out of this wood, which is going to be quite difficult. So I think what we're going to do here is unpin it, put these, take these blocks off, put a block right on that end and a block right on the other end, and then take a measurement off the line exactly the thickness of this uh, ledger here and fix a block on there. And then when we put it back in, hopefully we can sort of bow it in before we fix it. But yeah, unfortunately, wood is a natural material and sometimes you can't always get the straightest one. So you've got to sort of overcome that. Right, there you go, we managed to get that on. As I said, it's much more sort of within tolerance now, so just managed to bow that um, eight by two. That is actually 5.4 meters long, so um, yeah, we can carry on now, get them uh, frame fixed to the wall and get this other one in and we start resin anchor.
Right, there you go, that's kind of phase one done. We've got them all fixed in sort of temporarily. As I said, we put them on these tabs, just helps hold them. They're all pretty straight. We put some uh, M10 or 100 fissure fixings, as I said, put them in sort of every 1200. So what we're gonna do now is we've got to start the resin anchor, which is kicking about here. Here it is, so we're just gonna use this sort of uh, resin anchor. Oh, this is the kind of stuff we're gonna use. Um, not 100% sure. Um, what these blocks are exactly but i think they're sort of a light if you can just see here they're sort of a light sort of thermalite type block so uh, pretty confident that uh, resin anchor with the uh, threaded bar here we've got look we're going to cut threaded bar we'll make a nice job of holding them we're going to go about 80 mil into the wall because i don't want to penetrate the wall uh, on this side i think that side is the party wall to the next unit and i think they're six inch blocks but either way we'll go about 80 mil into the block work and then there's 50 mil or 45 mil for the timber and then we'll stick sort of 10 mil out. So we'll get that measurement, uh, get the disc cutter out, cut a load of these bars up. And then what we'll do is you can just see here, we're going to mark out 400 centers from this front face of the building. And what we've done is you can just see these, I can just see those pencil marks there. We've just roughly put where our joists are going to come so that we, they won't interfere. Uh, when we put our resin bolts in, they won't interfere with the joist. What we'll do is we'll get, uh, we've got to drill for 10 mil resin anchor. We need a 12 mil hole. So I'll put a 12 mil uh, wood bit through the timber first, and then we'll drill all the way through with a 12 mil masonry bit with a guide on it so it doesn't go too deep. So, yep, next phase, let's crack on. Okay, so we put a 12 mil hole in the timber for clearance and a 12 mil hole down to a depth of about 75 mil into the masonry here. We're nearly at the stage where we can put the resin in, but what we've got to make sure we do is make sure it's nice and clean. So I've got this uh, air compressor, um, this dust on the end of my air compressor. So I'll just shove that in the hole uh, and mind my eyes. That just gets those as well. You can see that the dust comes out. That just gets those, I think it comes with the So now we know those holes are nice and clean, we can inject the resin in, push the bolts in, uh, push the threaded rod in, let them go off, square washers, nuts, do them up, and that's that job done. So I'm just going to come to cut this threaded bar. I know the measurement one, I think it's about 140 mil. I've just made a tiny little jig up here with some off cuts. Obviously this is the 8x2 that we're working off. Got my disc cutter with a thin, uh, like a thin slitting blade in it. Yeah, just put a small bit of batten on here. I marked 140 mil, pencil mark from there to the end. A uh, couple of nails there. I can just pull the um, threaded bar to the end each time and snip it down there and repeat. Uh, it just means I don't have to measure it all out. So. Yeah, let's get those done. And then once I've cut them all, I've got a grinding disc, I think is it in there somewhere? It's there, grinding disc in there. I'll swap that over and just uh, take the burr off the ends so that we can throw the nuts on. So, yep, let's get on with that. Change the uh, disc on my grinder now. This is a grinding disc. All we've got to do is just take the burrs off the edge of these studs so that we can get them. Oh, that one's actually factory in, but take the burrs off these studs so that we can knock them in the hole uh, and they seat nicely into the resin, but also we can get the nut on. So just going to hold the disc cut upside down here and uh, let it rip. There you go. 40 more to do.
Right, it's finally come time to put a bit of resin in. Here we go, resin the standard sealant gun. All we've got to do is pump a bit of it out to start with to get it mixed. Here we go, it's quite stiff because it's quite cold. Here we go, starts with a dark colour. And as it mixes the two components together. That's five gone. It's five pounds gone, yeah, as the boss has just reminded me. There we go, look, nice consistent colour. <laughs> I'm trying to talk sensibly to the camera and Ryan keeps saying inappropriate things. So that's all of this resin mixed up now. What we're going to do is obviously push this as far as we can right down to the back of the hole. Should be able to get it because it's saying this is, we've got sort of 13 mil hole. And then we'll give it maybe a couple of pumps. And as we, we'll give it a couple of pumps. He's, he's laughing at me. We'll give it a couple of pumps, pull it out slowly. <laughs> and then, uh, don't spill any. Wait, we mustn't spill any, no. Uh, oh God. This is for grown-ups. So we'll push that all the way to the hole and we'll draw it out, a couple of pumps, and then that'll give us enough resin in the hole to push the bolt in. We don't want to put too much in because obviously we don't want the resin spewing out everywhere. So uh, let's go on with that. Right, here we go. So uh, trying to keep a straight face, what we're going to do is push it in as far as we can, give it a couple of pumps, and then pull it out and hope that everyone's happy. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go, let's get our rod in here. See what's happening, we can feel it. You can feel the resistance. That's lovely. What I'm going to do, because this is the first one, what I'm actually going to do is just pull it out and look, you can see there Ooh. that we've got a good sort of 75, 80 mil. So we're, we're happy. I will just put a tiny bit more in there. We know that pushing little twist if we stick, push that right in, a couple of pumps, we know that we're going to get a nice, solid, full bed of resin. So we can do that all the way along there. Then we just leave. It's quite cold today, so this will take a bit longer to go off. But what we're going to do is get all of these resin bolts put in. And then what we're going to do is work on the spine wall. And we'll probably come to put the nuts and washers on these tomorrow. I went straight I'm in. Gonna, I'm going to edit out you. I went straight in. I'm going to edit out you, Bramble, <laughs> no, along the no, side no. of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's all of those studs in. Every single one's gone in. Oh, Every single one's gone in an absolute treat. So all we've got to do now, um, it's actually one o'clock, so we're going to have a sandwich and a cup of tea, but we're not 100% sure what, I'm not sure if I've got enough uh, square plate washers and 10 mil nuts for these, but it doesn't matter because they could all be going off. Um, if we haven't got enough to do it today, we can pick them up for tomorrow. So yeah, we've had a really sort of good first part of the day. The next thing we're gonna do after another sandwich is basically you can just see, this is a 3.6 meter length of eight by two. And basically what we're gonna do is now build a six by two wall uh, coming more or less to the end of where that uh, eight by two is. And that wall is basically gonna go all the way through the center, it's a spine wall. Uh, it does run, you can just see here, it sort of runs in line with this door. So I think all we need is a, basically is going to be an office at the back. There's a showroom at the front there, a storage down, uh, downstairs here, and then upstairs is sort of a, a bigger showroom. All that basically is needed out of this back office is a doorway, which will come across here. So we'll bring the stud wall. So I'll move the pan camera around a bit quick. We'll bring this six by two stud wall all the way down to sort of, here, more or less where the end of that carpet is. And then what we'll do, we won't do it at the minute because these electrics have got to be moved. We'll put another ledger across there and then we'll put a double eight by two uh, in on a uh, truss, a joist hanger on that side and it will just bear, bear on top of this wall here. So there you go, we, we're cracked on really well. Um, happy that those resin anchors are gonna get a nice good holding. And actually, this is a big gable flank, you know, you can just see these, I don't know if point to them, up here you can see these angle brackets have been welded on these roof purlings and that is to sort of try and tie in this massive gable end so there's not an awful lot holding that so obviously this is sort of like traditional joisting house joisting so the fact that we've resin anchored that to that wall there and then resin anchored it to this wall here by the time we joist it out and floor it what it's going to actually do as i said before this is the external gable end it's actually going to tie that in nicely so um, but yeah, there we go, have a sandwich now, and then we'll get this, uh, make a start on this stud wall. So as I said, we've had our lunch now, what we're going to do, we know roughly the line here, so we're going to rip some of this carpet up, 
we can set our line exactly. Uh, Ryan is setting up the saw, so we're going to set a little cutting station here. We've got all the six for two, which actually, this is recycled. This was actually eight for two that was part of the, there was a bit of stud work and stuff here before we got here. So it's quite cool because we're, re, we're re recycling that. So yeah, let's get this ripped up. I'll set up a time lapse and you can see our progress from there. So we've got this base plate and you'll notice that we didn't put any DPC under it because basically there's no need. Uh, we know this floor's dry and there's a big DPC under this power floated floor anyway. So fix the first 6 2 plate down. We put sort of fixings every 600 staggered. And then what we've just done is cut the top plate as well, mark some 600 centers. As you can see, they're all laid out now, bottom plate and top plate. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, we don't know how this floor is for level. So we're not gonna cut all the studs the same size. What I'm going to do is put the level, uh, put the laser level back up there, fire a line across. Um, again, this is the timber. We're reusing this timber, so we'll cut a nice, clean, square edge on that, plonk it down against our mark there, and where it, where the laser uh, hits it up here, put a mark, cut it. Uh, we'll tone out, I'll tone out, or skew now them all in, and they'll all be stood up. Again, we, we don't need to worry about it in this instance because there's no wind or anything to blow them over, so they'll stand up. Uh, and then once they're all done, we can just simply get this top plate, turn it upside down and nail it down through the top. I'll just quickly show you what we're doing. I know it's pretty simple, but obviously you can see the laser line here. We know that's exactly level. So all I do is put our stud that's got a nice square edge on it on the bottom there, up against here, little mark, and then we cut it to there, and we know that all of these are gonna be dead level. So there you go, that's all in there, absolutely spot on level. I wonder if I could stand up here on these bits of carpet, whether we can see. Ooh, can we see how that should all line in? I don't know if you can see that line. Oh, look at that, lovely. The beauty of these lasers is absolutely fantastic, look, to, for jobs like this. Obviously set this laser line, the thickness of our top plate down, so that obviously the top of the top plate is at the same level as the underside of the floor joist. So yeah, that's all in, I've just put a couple of sort of temporary, not temporary, but just sort of braces to bind these two top plates together, not half lapped or anything. Um, the wall is in at 600 centers, but the joists are going at 400 centers. Not particularly worried about the fact that sort of, it's only every third one. So if you see here, look, from the wall, I've got 400, 800, and then obviously 1200 falls on a 600 center. I think we could either put like a, a sort of noggin under there, an extra support under there, but actually this has got 18 mil OSB going on it all the way down there. So, you know, not really that fast. There'll be plenty of support, um, you know, for that. It's only what's going upstairs here is sort of kitchen display stuff. So uh, shouldn't be too much weight. You'll notice that we haven't gone right the way to the bottom because uh, Ryan, uh, you know, the chap who, who was sort of doing it with, he's not 100% sure he's gonna have an office through here. And um, we've obviously got to accommodate this fire door. I think, Basically, there's going to be a sort of wall across the back here. All of this bit is going to be sort of uh, warehousing and stuff for goods in and goods out. We'll probably put a van in here. Uh, on the back here, there's going to be a toilet block and a, a meeting room, I think. And then obviously the, the all important fire exit. So 
this is going to be an office in the back here, but he's not quite sure. I oh, know I'm spinning around, sorry. We haven't got a plan, obviously, we're making it up as we go along, but we're not quite sure where this door's going to go. But with that wall in now, we've got all of our sort of, apart from this, this end bit, which we can sort of, he's going to have a think about it tonight, and we'll probably know what we're doing with this tomorrow. But in terms of all the resin, that's all in. All our sort of three points at working to are in. You know, the external wall, the party wall, and the central wall are all in. So it's, it's a relatively simple job now. As I said, washers and nuts on the resin bolts, uh, which we'll do tomorrow, and then we can physically start joisting it out. So we should, should start to really come together quite quickly. So that may well be it for, for, for it's certainly it for today, and it may well be it for this part of the video. Um, you know, I hope you found it sort of interesting what we're doing. I've been quite looking forward to doing this actually because it's inside, as I said, we're, we're sort of in the winter and it's inside and the weather can't affect us. It's all fairly simple first fixing work. We don't have to think too much about it. And there's Ryan, he's come back, he's singing, he's happy. Um, and the beauty of the job like this is that you can actually make a, a big show in quite a short space of time. So that's it for this one. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, as I said, thank you very much. And you can join us, keep an eye out on my channel for the next part, which is hopefully coming soon.